and now uh, we will present our conclusion of Unfrozen, Do You Want to Meet a Savior? Uh, so if our actors would come on up and get in place. Uh, they've worked hard. I'm glad our Christmas program didn't have a, have a lot of parts for our younger children. They just have to come in their jammies this year. Uh, with so many sick, we would be scrambling today. Uh, we have Princess Inga, played by Hannah Geilinger, Princess Olga by Hannah Brigham. Our narrators and princes are trading off, and that's Brennan Kavanaugh and Jacob McClucky. And our high school class and teachers are filling in the readings for us uh, for the worship portion. So uh, today we have Rachel and Anna Badke and Haley Geilinger. So this is Unfrozen uh, Conclusion. We now continue our story of two sisters, Princess Olga and Princess Inga. Hey. Princess Olga had special powers. Like that princess in that movie. Anyway, Olga was afraid that her powers would hurt her sister, so she ran away and lived alone in the cold, barren wilderness. It's nicer than it sounds. But Inga loved her sister very much, and she missed her very much. She decided that she had to find Olga and try to bring her back, whatever the cost. Yes, Inga decided that she would go find her sister, Olga. I think this is where you're supposed to go look for your sister. No thanks. No thanks? What do you mean, no thanks? I mean, I'm good over here. What's happening over there? What's wrong? I'm scared. Of what? You name it. What if I go off into the wilderness and get lost? I could freeze to death. What if I find Olga and she's mad at me and uses her powers to hurt me? What if she's not mad but still can't control her powers and zaps me on accident? Did someone say my name over there? I'm hungry. When are we breaking for lunch? It's okay to be scared, but you still have to go over there. Otherwise, we don't have a story. Maybe later. Never fear, beautiful Princess Inga. I will save you. Who are you? I am a prince. I will fight off any evil snow monsters or wicked spells or whatever your sister throws at you. Have no fear. Your savior is here. I don't think this is how the story goes. Who's that guy? Did he bring any food? Thanks, Prince, but no thanks. What? Aren't you scared? Yes, I'm scared. A little bit. But it's okay. Sometimes life is scary. But God loves me, and he's going to help me get through whatever I need to get through. Did you say we're through? Good, I'm starving. I skipped breakfast this morning. Wait for me. Now what? To be continued. The shepherds were not the only ones to learn of the birth of Jesus. Some, like the Magi from the East, were filled with the same joy and excitement that captivated the shepherds. But there were still others, men like the corrupt King Herod, who had an entirely different reaction. When he learned of the arrival of the newborn king, Herod was filled with fear. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star and when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. Now we will sing Silent Night.
Many people live in fear today. Like Herod, some of us fear losing power or control. Others are afraid of the future, while still others are afraid that they will end up alone. Jesus is our Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Christ is with us. The life that he lived, the death that he died for us, and the power of his resurrection prove to us that Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. God's perfect love drives out fear and leaves joy in its place. Sing joyfully to the Lord, your righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Psalm chapter 33, verses 1 through 5. And now will you join us in singing Joy to the World on page 246. And now for the conclusion of the tale of the two sister princess of the two sisters, Princess Olga and Princess Inga. Did you say we're finishing up the story today? We have to. It's our last day. I don't know. There's an awful lot of the story left. Maybe we should just tell the kids to go watch the movie. Fro- Stop it. And this is an entirely different story. We can do this. We just need to move fast. Are you sure? Yes, but we have to hurry. Read fast. Olga was living in the wilderness. Inga loved her sister and decided to go after her. There was also a prince. He offered, he offered to go with her, but Inga asked him to stay behind and watch the kingdom for her. So Inga went off in search of her sister, and there was all, another guy with her reindeer who went with her. We don't have anybody else. Scratch that. Inga went alone. Eventually, she reached her sister's icy palace. Olga was frightened and wanted to go away, so she created an evil snow monster to scare her off. (laughs) So Inga left behind the... So Inga left, but then she came back. So then the prince went to get Olga. We don't have time for that part. So the prince came back. But wait, he was supposed to find Olga and bring her back here. What next? So then we all thought that Olga was the bad guy because she froze Inga's heart. I did what now? You forgot to read that part. Sorry, I've been kind of in a hurry. But anyway, it turns out that the prince is the bad guy. What now? The evil prince is about to destroy Olga when Inga sacrifices herself to save her sister, proving that love is stronger than any other power. The end. You know, love is pretty great. It is, especially the way God loves us. You're right. We've been spending all this time telling our story when we should be out there telling the story of how God loves everyone. Let's go. Does God really love everyone? Of course. Even me? I'm the bad guy. Even you. Come on, we'll tell you all about it. 
and they lived happily ever after. You guys are going to need a narrator. Come on, wait for me. Shepherds and wise men aren't the only ones who got to meet the baby Jesus and experience the love and power of God face to face. There were others. The Bible recounts that when Jesus was still a baby, Mary and Joseph took him to the temple in Jerusalem to be consecrated to the Lord in accordance with Jewish custom. But it turned out to be far from your customary consecration. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name Angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated for the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simoan, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, So, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles in the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. When Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against. 35, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel in the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple who worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 38. Now we watch a video called Good Christian Men Rejoice. Proclaim the name of Jesus. This story is meant to be shared. It has been from the beginning. 
The prophet Isaiah shared it with the people of Israel hundreds of years before Christ was even born. On the night of his birth, the angels shared it with the shepherds. After meeting Jesus, the Bible says that the shepherds shared it with whoever would listen. Simeon and Anna shared it in the temple courts of Jerusalem. And now it's our turn to proclaim the name of Jesus. We thank our Heavenly Father who sent his son to earth as a baby. And we remember who this child became. We celebrate the one who died for us and saved us from our sins. We joyfully acknowledge all that Christ has done in our lives. We proclaim the name of Jesus. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Psalm chapter 46, verses 7 through 11. And now join us in singing, Go Tell It on the Mountain, on page 251. And just as we started our program last week with uh, Do You Want to Build a Snowman with our junior high singers, we're going to have Shelby Ratchie sing Do You Want to Meet a Savior.
For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, so that the world through him might be saved. to what others say those that mock and laugh at him who wants another chance on that great day let's do this together just you and me what are you gonna do do you want to meet a savior cause I could surely 